Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of F1 2021 and my driver career mode here on the channel. I hope you're all having a great day today. We're headed to the Austrian GP coming off of a heartbreaking home race in the Canadian GP where we had an unfortunate mechanical failure uh, that took us out of a potential race victory and finally beating Daniel Ricciardo who instead came out on top. Coming into this GP, there's been some R&D changes. McLaren has fallen down to fourth place on the grid. Aston Martin, Mercedes, Red Bull all ahead of us now, but we're all still very, very close. But this could be the first race weekend where we might not be the favorite team here in Austria for myself and Ricardo. So we're going to see how things change because so far to begin this season, we've been the dominant team. Ricardo has won every single race that he has completed and the others, he's DNF'd. And for myself, we've of course got one race victory at Imola and then we haven't won since then but we were in position in the last episode to do that and it just didn't quite work out there with the bad luck that we were dealt with here now is hopefully we can uh, have some luck on our side today coming into Austria and it starts with a good of course qualifying session and one of my favorite GPs of the season because there's always some element of chaos here in Austria with the weird AI and surprisingly we have yet to have a safety car this season I think we've had no safety car for like the last eight to nine GPs going into last season as well and now we head into Austria and I would fully expect to see a safety car at some point throughout this GP we basically have a brand new engine in the car uh, we put one in uh, going into the Canadian GP and we had to take a big grid penalty and start at the back of the grid so hopefully we don't have to start at the back this time but in Q1 I was having a bit of a rough time here now I wasn't even in the top 10 I was only P13 and we ended up 14th place in Q1 and we still made it by an easy margin of about nine tenths of a second but still I could only manage to go P14 that was a bit concerning here as we went into Q2 because I was pushing pretty hard in Q1 and it would as well show into Q2 again because I was struggling with the pace my rear tires were heated up after just one lap I went P9 for the time being but I would drop down to P13 we are about to get eliminated here in Q2 if we can't better our lap by a significant margin we come through to cross the line to only manage 12th place and then I try to make another lap but unfortunately I invalidated my own time we will miss Q3 we have been eliminated and will start the GP in 14th place and as well interestingly enough Max Verstappen has a five place grid penalty uh, for illegal blocking well we have some work to do let's head to the grid here for the Austrian GP this is it then, race day in Spielberg for this year's Austrian Grand Prix. Not long to go before our drivers hurtle off the line and into the first turn, the Nicky Lauda curve as it was renamed in 2019 in memory of one of Formula One's most beloved figures. It's one of the shortest laps on the calendar today then with seven rights and just three lefts, making up the 10 corners of this high speed circuit. Turn two is barely a corner at all. They'll be flat out through there, a left hand kink into the uphill braking zone of turn three. Turns one, three and four are all potential opportunities to overtake. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Pierre Gasly lines up on pole position and Lando Norris lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Bottas, Sonoda, Lewis Hamilton and Ricardo, Verstappen, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty, Vettel, Giovinazzi and Esteban Ocon, Russell, Leclerc, Carlos Sainz, the golden boy, Joe, Lundgaard, Nicholas Latifi and Callum Eilert. Mick Schumacher and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. Well then, I don't know what we're going to be able to do here today in the Austrian GP as we're on the grid. No rain expected for this one. A complete dry race as we would get this formation lap underway. You saw the starting grid. Daniel Ricciardo as well. Not on pole. Not even on the front row. Not even on row number two. He is going to be in for a rough one just like I think we are here. As all of a sudden, McLaren, we're kind of getting a wake-up call here today to start this Austrian GP, which has been a very nice flowing season for us so far. It's five red lights. Pierre Gasly is going to be lights out and underway 
from pole position. It's a great start for him. Lando Norris, not so much. Yuki Tsunoda right there putting the attackers ahead down into turn one. There goes Ricardo at the inside of the Mercedes, but a rough turn one exit for Ricardo is going to set him back. Both Hamilton and Bontes ahead of the Australian. Now, as you can see, Norris and Tsunoda side by side as we're going to make this long lunge down into turn two, but Tsunoda makes it an Alpha Tori 1 2 here in Austria on this first and opening lap. There you see Verstappen. He's scrapping it up alongside Sebastian Vettel there in the Aston Martin as well as you got myself trying to of course make my way forwards here the best I can in the safest manner possible and keep our car in one piece and we were just uh, behind this battle by a few positions now as you continue to see Valtteri Bontas in front of his teammate of Lewis Hamilton right now Mercedes they've made some serious upgrades coming into this GP so they would expect to be running here into the podium positions if everything goes smoothly here and that's always been a key thing in this career mode Mercedes they've never really had a smooth sailing uh, career season yet and I don't think they're going to have one this season either. There's Ricardo Sainz actually of the inside of Guan Yu Zhou and he's going to complete the pass there in the Ferrari as you can see though Gasly already driving away from his teammate of Sonoda Lando Norris just behind. A smooth calm start here as I was settling in just behind George Russell as well as his Alpine teammate of Esteban Ocon now as we make this long stretch down towards turn two a yellow flag actually just up in front of us is Yuki Sonoda who's on just the second lap of this GP having an engine failure. You saw the smoke pouring out of the back of his Alfa Tori. He's going to pull off the track and Sonoda is out of the GP after a great start now as we would be making a lunge here up the inside of George Russell down into turn three and sure enough we complete the pass right there. Move up into now 11th place and with DRS on lap three we're going to cruise right on past Esteban Ocon here on the soft compound tire and up into 10th place we go so we've made our way into the points and I knew we had good pace in this car. I just couldn't find it in qualifying. I honestly expect to be up towards the podium here if everything then goes smoothly here in this GP. Now is actually behind us on lap 5. There's going to be a yellow flag and there's going to be a safety car. George Russell in the Alpine is out of the session. Uh, some drivers actually in the pit lane and this is where it started. Carlos Sainz heading into the pit lane. Russell slams into the back of the Spaniard. Typical Austria AI situation that we've seen bring out safety cars in the past and sure enough we would see some drivers head in. Ricardo Vettel there into the pit lane and actually interestingly enough Ricardo repairing the front wing. I looked in the replay to see where he picked up that damage, but actually couldn't find where he might have gotten some front wing damage. So Ricardo and Veto behind us, and we're up into P8 for the restart. That Austria chaos is starting to kick off a little bit here as we would be back racing now, coming to lap 9, and you got Pierre Gasly. You got Lando Norris up there in the top two, leading the way down into turn one, then Bontas, then Lewis Hamilton there, the Mercedes duo, and Verstappen just behind. Then you got Charles Leclerc, and then you got all the way down to my Myself here, who's just behind Antonio Giovinazzi on this lunge towards at turn two. I'm actually going to lunge one up the inside of Antonio Giovinazzi here, wheel to wheel, nearly into the side of him now as we pass our former car that we drove for the last couple of seasons, and up into the seventh position we go here on the ninth lap of this GP. Two drivers retired so far, of course, uh, being most recently George Russell and Yuka Tsunoda on just the second lap of this race. Now, interesting moment here. Daniel Ricciardo has a bit of trouble here now on this restart three wide he was as you can see some contact with the Audi that would put Ricardo back in the pit lane for a front wing replacement it has gone from bad to worse for Daniel Ricardo and then moments later here a few laps later we're starting to see some scheduled pit stops get underway Max Verstappen Lando Norris here on lap 14 a medium compound off a medium compound goes on and then I was actually on lap 15 coming to lap 16 making my first and only scheduled pit stop of the GP just behind Lewis Hamilton here as we had made up more ground and we're doing a really nice job so far in this GP just kind of keeping our car in one piece that's going to be the big thing here so we take the soft compound off put the medium compound on and out we go and we will be going to the end of this GP here. There was actually a yellow flag on the circuit. Zhou Guan Yu actually had a, a bit of a moment. He went around out of the penultimate corner, but was safely able to stay out of the way and get into the pit lane. A bit of a moment for myself. We lost traction and got into the wall. Thank goodness we get no uh, body damage or rear wing damage, but that allows Leclerc and Giovinazzi to pounce on us as we go down into turn two. Leclerc 
he outbreaks us, but I'm able to just get him here on the exit of the corner, get the power down, and we fortunately stay ahead of the Monogasque driver. I feel like we've had more developments in this GP so far than we have all season combined here now as we were running P8. So we still had some work to do. Max Verstappen on lap 23 actually comes back into the pit lane for a second pit stop. Uh, so he is now going to be behind us. And then you see Lando Norris, a move up the inside of Pierre Gasly. This is the battle for the race lead here in the Austrian GP. Gasly on the left. And there you see Norris on the right. He's going to move through and take the position from the AlphaTauri driver. So the Red Bull of Lando Norris who's trying to get back in this championship fight to the top position here on lap 25 of 36 running out of time in this Austrian GP. We have now moved up into fifth place after everything had kind of cycled through with drivers pitting and whatnot in Hamilton fourth. Bottas in third. Mercedes having a splendid GP here. Now his yellow flags are out in front of us in this second sector going into that third sector and it looks like it's going to be Pierre Gasly who's off the circuit and he's down the order down into fifth place. What has happened to Pierre Gasly? Here's a look at it right here. He makes contact with the blue flag car of Callum Eilat and that would put him into the grass. Another look at it right here. Uh, just a terribly timed moment uh, to run down Callum Eilat who was just directly on the racing line with the blue flags. A lapped car has taken out Pierre Gasly and forced him down the order. So it was great for me because I'm now up into fourth place. Lando Norris had come in for another pit stop. I don't know why he had come in one more time but he did and there you can see myself working my way through Callum Eilat. He's kind of all over the place here but this moves us into third place after Norris pits and Gasly has his trouble. Bottas Hamilton a Mercedes 1-2. When's the last time we've seen that here on this F1 My Driver career mode? I can't remember but we've capitalized just on staying out of trouble, keeping the car in one piece and now we have an opportunity to fight Lewis Hamilton and take second place. I was putting the pedal down as hard as I could. I was pushing as hard as I could because I see there's still seven laps to go. We could have a chance to maybe run down Bontes and steal the win of this GP which would be pretty crazy considering how this GP has gone here. Now a move to the left side of Hamilton lap 31 and we breeze by with the help of the DRS 2.6 seconds. The gap to Valtteri Bontes now as you're going to see though uh, we were closing in on Bontes as these closing laps were winding down here. Now is Daniel Ricciardo out uh, actually had a bit of a moment here. He went three wide with Carlos Sainz, Max Verstappen, down into turn one, or sorry, Pierre Gasly, not Max Verstappen, and he made more contact with Gasly and got more front wing damage. Ricardo had to pit one more time. A disastrous GP for Daniel Ricardo here in Austria. Here I am now, coming to three laps to go, closing the gap to Vantre Buntas, but it's not enough. 1.8 seconds a gap right now as we were coming up on these final two laps in the Austrian GP. What a rebound GP this has been for us, but not going to quite be enough to win the GP. Like I said, you can see the gap was continuously coming down. It was getting closer and closer and closer now to 1.6, 1.5 seconds here, but just wasn't enough. And I was relying on hopefully uh, Bottas having some form of issue or something here. So I didn't give up. I was still pushing just because you really never know what's going to happen. White flag in the air. Final lap of the Austrian GP underway. Vantre Bontas. It's been a while since we've seen Mercedes on the top step of the podium and they're going to have two cars on the podium from the looks of it here for the first time in a while here. Now is it's just not going to be enough for Vantre Bontas. The gap 1.1 seconds. I couldn't quite get into DRS range but what a rebound here of second place as we come through this penultimate corner. Bontas leads the way out of the final turn. He's going to win and we're going to go spinning in the background here now as we've had a big looper round. Hamilton goes through. We're onto the podium still, but here comes Lando Norris, who's going to steal the final podium position. We've completely choked in the final turn. The car gave no indication that it was going to go and spin on me. It just kicked out. I had no opportunity to, to uh, react, and we now end up in fourth place. We still win driver of the day to top the cake, but wow, what a finish here in the Austrian GP. The Mercedes team pulled out a fantastic performance today. They should be proud. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. A choke 
in the final corner cost us a podium right there and at the end of the season uh, instead of getting 12 points um, we, we could have got 18 points those six points right there could make a big difference at the end of the season Ricardo his first time finishing a race without a win this season look at the point gap five points behind is Norris Bontas is only 19 out we're 22 out for Stappen Hamilton uh, as well as Gasly less than 50 points behind so I mean none of those guys were even out of the picture yet as well so it's going to get interesting here as well as well we've gotten halfway through this season so far here in this career mode now as you guys know it's only a 16 race season but immediately after the gp we go to work because that gp was an indicator that we need to make sure we're cranking out upgrades on this car because we have dropped the ball a little bit here and you can see mercedes aston martin red bull they're all ahead of us on their r d and i'm surprised aston martin it shows them second but they clearly didn't show the pace for second place um on the grid in that GP so we'll see what they're going to be able to do in these coming episodes now but once again you see the point standings right there on your screen if you guys enjoyed you know what to do as usual like I said we got some work to do to get this McLaren team right back up on the top Ricardo is on top of the points but right now Red Bull had a lot more pace than both of us there it was just fortunate that they had issues and and weird pit stop moments there that brought us back into it but next up we head into arguably my worst track on the schedule Britain Silverstone that's going to be a rough one so hopefully we can hang on okay there and that will be the halfway point of the GP I should clarify but that does it for me I will see you guys in Silverstone where we try to fight for hopefully a solid finish there and I will see you guys next time have a great day everybody